Welcome to the People, Purpose, and Profits Business Coaching Podcast. I'm Brian Buck, and my wonderful co-host is... And I'm Kat. And we are bringing to you today a topic that many people struggle with, but many people don't really want to talk about, but it is called imposter syndrome. Uh, Kat, you want to explain what imposter syndrome is? Absolutely. The term was defined a really long time ago um, and has been in research due to the fact that a lot of people that had great accolades, meaning they went through university, had their PhDs, had, you know, reached really high levels in a company, were struggling to admit that they've done that through their hard work and their intelligence, but rather were given it of for um, saying that it was based on luck. And the more I'm working in the coaching space, I'm seeing that these intelligent human beings are struggling. And it's a little different because some coaches don't have the accolades, but they have the experience, meaning that they are qualified to give advice to someone but they discount it because there is a lot of fear, there is a lot of doubt, there is a lot of um, traumas from the past that tells them otherwise. Mm -hmm. So we are literally, when we do the imposter syndrome, we are in the search for truth. Yeah, it makes me think how often people ask the question, who am I to give advice? You know, because there's a part where we do kind of disqualify ourselves. You know, this is, that's a term it's interesting to say it's been around a while because I've only have really heard it talked a lot about maybe in the last six years. Maybe it's just always been there. And just as I've gotten deeper in the coaching world, it's a thing. But is there anything that kind of brought all of this back into the light in the last half a decade? Um, I do think that because of where the world is heading and we're starting to recognize the potential of the human being and everywhere you turn, someone is talking about it. We're starting to notice within ourselves what we're capable of. Mm. But then we have to look at how we've done things, like the patterns of the past, the way we think, the beliefs that we have, and notice where we stand compared to where we can be. And it can be quite frightening because we challenge what we normally know or what we normally see or what we've seen from others around us. And it's not an easy journey but it's definitely the most rewarding. And it, it, it is really what we should all aim for. Well, you're making me think too. Um, I recently heard this and it's brought a lot of clarity to me. And that is in the workplace, it used to be manufacturing and what we can do with our hands and machines. But industry or, you know, businesses are now about knowledge workers, which is the unseen. It's not that. So the fact that we've got more and more people who are creating value based off of their minds, uh, maybe some of that could be um, what leads to imposter syndrome. Because, you know, if you're on a machine, you could easily see done and good quality or not. When it comes to our own knowledge, um, how do you say what's good quality in that? Because someone could always come with something right, better, right? right? So, I agree. So, so you're tough. actually making me think, you know, so often I've used this concept to help leaders, but I'm like, oh my goodness, we need to also equip leaders on how to help their team because their team's probably having imposter syndrome to a certain level too. Oh my goodness. It's, it's everywhere. And I, you know, what's fascinating. Um, one of the things that came um, up quite a bit um, since I started coaching coaches, particularly is that a lot of people look as at teachers, like as children, when we grow up, we look at teachers as being like this superhuman that has all the answers and we're back here, you know, really small and we don't know what we're talking about and we don't have what it takes to lead or teach. So when you're in that position, that you have a, a you know great knowledge, then you have to teach it. And that that's really what challenges us because we start, if we're not confident enough in ourselves, then the, the knowledge takes backseat. Mm. 
you just made me think of something when I was young, I was a bit of a punk and a rebel. I <laughs> never saw the teachers as on a pedestal. And usually, so I was like, Oh, maybe that's why I've never, I, I've never actually struggled with um, imposter syndrome until my workplace became toxic. Hmm. And then I started to think, Oh my gosh, am I, am I the moron that they're suddenly treating me like, and I've just been, I've got, and it, and it took me a bit to, pull out of reacting and to really honestly look at what I have accomplished and what I am capable of. But it it is fascinating. I was like, where is this? Where is it? You know, my toxic workplace brought up everything, uh, all kinds of emotions and thoughts. But I do remember the imposter syndrome was the first time I experienced it. And it's not fun. (laughs) No. And I think you're, um, you know, based on what you're saying, you're more of an action taker. And people with, you know, I don't want to just say high IQ because it's high EQ as well. Um, But generally, having a good intention for the world, wanting to serve, they tend to become their biggest critics. So Mm -hmm. they're more in their minds and less into the action. And I find it that the solution in overcoming the imposter syndrome is to take action to um, show proof and to understand and to get very curious of where it all stems from. Mm. Cause while like in, in the thing is like, for example, even for you, you've been an action taker and you had no, no issues with the imposter syndrome. Right. But then mm-hmm. you've gotten into a space where it made you question yourself mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you were brave enough to look at it and to, show the truth to yourself to where other people will take um what was being said or how they felt as the truth Mm. and make a new reality or create a reality that's very uh, to their disadvantage Mm. no that makes a lot of sense which i kind of think to a certain degree that's probably my rebelliousness coming up again like i'm not going to let other people tell me what to say about myself um but one thing you were saying, and I'm wondering, because you wrote a book on this, uh, so you're even more of an expert than I am on this. I coach a lot on it, but where does perfectionism participate with all this? Like to a certain degree, I almost think a bit of what you're saying when people are saying, I, uh, I have imposter syndrome because I'm not enough, maybe, right. is part of that is saying I'm not perfect enough like is perfectionism a part of it or not um I think it is I mean it shows up differently but definitely it is and it's all based on the desire to be loved and to be accepted Mm. and I think ultimately survival because if you're you know if we think back and we've talked about this in previous episodes if you um you know back thousands and millions or tens of thousands of years ago if you weren't part of a tribe then you you know, w- would have starved and probably died. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, it, it's, it. our brain is always looking to protect us. Mm-hmm. So in taking apart the things that we say to ourselves, it's easy to recognize where it stems from. And usually I, I do find it that it's usually related to a past trauma. Mm-hmm. There's something that we're trying to win by being perfect. Mm-hmm. And even to like with our, like with ourselves, it doesn't necessarily have the, and this is where people get it wrong is like, oh, well, I have to try to get it from someone else. No, even like the most important acceptance and love is the one you give yourself. Right. So if you don't have that, you're going to try to get it from the outside, whether you're trying to be perfect or you're trying to please, or, you know, you're, you're trying to minimize what you're doing. So that someone else out there accepts you. And therefore, if they accept you, you accept yourself. So it always comes back to what we're doing to ourselves, not so much from the outside, but the outside tends to reflect it a lot uh, better and for us to recognize it. Great. One thing I was thinking about, and you know me and our audience knows me, I'm caring and loving and believe in amazing possibilities in everybody. But (laughs) But. (laughs) I also wonder 
if some people need to feel imposter syndrome because they are, I mean, I'm not like, I'm thinking about this one place that I worked at and there was a VP who every two years was in a new job. And I worked with them and with a couple of other people and everyone was like, this person doesn't know at all what they're doing. And when I talked with other people, they're like, oh yeah, that person didn't know what they were doing in the last job. And, and I've seen people in the workplace who they keep moving before they get caught at what they don't know. And, and it, like, I just almost wonder like, and, and I, I jokingly say this about myself, I'm often confidently wrong myself. I, you know, I could bring this up because I would look at signals and be like, okay, maybe I need to figure out. So is there a piece to maybe where, and maybe it's not imposter syndrome and maybe it's really a question about humility mm -hmm. um, and being open to learning, but like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there's definitely, you know, um, something happening within themselves if that's, you know, their pattern. Uh, and obviously they're, they're, you know, it's really hard to to tell what exactly is behind like driving that behavior because we are very complex, you know, human beings, but guilt is one of them. I don't really know if imposter is because when um, the imposter syndrome is when you're doing well and you know that well, but you're the one discounting it. Mm. So let's say, for example, you went and got your PhD in psychology and you are a great uh, psychologist and you've helped a lot of um, uh, clients. But then when you go home, you feel that you're a fraud. Mm -hmm. You feel that you're just lucky and that the results you're having are not really because of your work or your knowledge. That's really how the imposter sy syndrome looks like versus someone who doesn't know what they're doing and they're going out there and really being an imposter. No, that makes sense. What, you have like one or two tips that someone can do to maybe either recognize it and call it, because sometimes just even saying what it is then lets you be able to do something about it. Or what are a couple of things that someone could do either on their own or with a coach uh, to help process this? Because no one wants to stay in that state. No, no, definitely. And, you know, that's, you know, where I love my job because I hold a mirror for people to look at what is fiction and what is truth. And that's really what one of the things that you can do is to start recognizing what are the things that are made up by your mind and what are the things that you can see black and white. And, you know, for, for coaching especially um, is really challenging because like you said, you know, when you're in an assembly line, you can see the, the results with coaching is a little, there's a lot of flexibility in what happens. Mm -hmm. So I, I recommend people go out there and explore things, you know, maybe, and, and, and this is where I find a lot of coaches are going wrong. They're, they're, they get uh, a coaching certification and they think they have it all figured out and they don't give themselves any error for mar like any margin for error. So maybe that right there can be like your practice and your practice doesn't mean that you're not going to be paid for it, but that you recognize that you work maybe for a smaller fee to get yourself to build the, the credibility within yourself and with other people. And then it's really, really important to clarify your, your values, who you are, what you want, what you want to, to see and believe in yourself. I do honestly uh, think that at the end of the day, belief in yourself will um, make the, the imposter syndrome disappear. Because when you have that belief and you know in your heart of hearts that what you're doing is the right thing and it feels right, then you you can you know be out there doing it without having to worry or looking behind you to, to see if someone is about to discover that you're a fraud. Yeah, uh, you know when you're talking to you just make me think of the quote. I want to say it's my Angelou. 
which is uh, no one cares about what you know. They care about how you make them feel, mm -hmm. you no know, and remember, right. Yeah. Or something right. along. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, once again, and this is something that I found in business is people don't buy things. They buy emotions. They do. So you don't buy a drill because you want a drill. You want to buy a drill because you want the capability to make holes in your wall so you could have art that makes you happy. So you're buying happiness. And with wherever we're at, imposter or not, or thinking, if we just think about what's the impact that I'm making people feel? Because that really is where success is. You might not necessarily always see it in your bottom line, you will eventually, or in the stuff that you have. But if you are making that impact in other people, that is something you can actually read and see. And, and I guess as knowledge workers, we could start to make that more visible. Right. And I have to admit, you know, I, I struggle with it for a really, really long time. And it's like, I think the reason why I wrote a book on it and I started looking more into it was because I was seeing a lot of people in my industries doing the same thing. And that's really when I came across the, the whole imposter syndrome. And I was just like, wow, first of all, the recognition of the fact that I'm not alone and that I'm not the only one feeling that way well, it was a huge step in the right direction. It helped me peel off some of the layers that were standing between me and my success. Hmm. Would you say um, kind of once you go through the process, do you, are you then have enough knowledge and equipped to prevent it from happening again? Or does it show up? Cause you know, as we get more successful in life we have new problems, which then, you know, I kind of think part of this is this being comfortable in the growth zone. When we're in the growth zone, we're in the, I don't know zone cause I'm still growing. And so I could see people not liking that space. You know, it takes a bit of persistence. So it makes me think does imposter syndrome keep a shadow as you get to new levels or once you figure it out you're kind of free of it forever i think it, it varies but i do like you know my own belief again this is you know what i've noticed is that it doesn't go away completely mm. but it will be there but it's easier for you to recognize it because once you become aware of a pattern and some of the things that you're saying to yourself and you're doing, then when you're in that situation, it becomes automatic, especially when you found the answer and you're no longer a prisoner of that thought. Mm. That's awesome. Well, you know who aren't imposters is our audience. That was a weird transition, but I tried to. Uh, <laughs> I want to just say thank you for this today. By the way, what's the name of your book? Uh, the Seven Ways to um, Overcome the Imposter Syndrome, the Entrepreneur Imposter Syndrome. All right. So we'll make sure we put a link for that in our show notes just because people need to see it. It is a great book. Um, I read it when it first came out, um, but I thought it'd be better to just hear you talk about it and say, here's what I read in the book when I'm talking to the author. So thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, but our audience, uh, we just appreciate you. We create this show to be able to give you insights, thoughts, and tools and resources so you could be able to not only make your business better, but you can also make your life better because this is all about people purpose and profits and how they all work together to make the world a better place. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, or listen to us on your podcatcher of choice. Give us reviews. Uh, and you can also join our Facebook group, interact with Kat and I and other listeners and discuss the episodes. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. See you soon.